What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we have seen four episodes of Ashoka. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what you think of the show from what I've I've seen. I've seen it, and most people would agree, at least the people that I've spoken to, they like the show. Uh... What are your thoughts, Brian? Because I have my bones to pick. There are a couple of things that um, I have for problems with with this show. One is, you know me, I always nitpick. I always find those little things that like, mm, that don't make sense, man. But what do you think of, of, of Ashoka so far? I generally have liked the show. I feel like it is gaining some momentum as the episodes have gone on. I really liked episode three and four. I feel like that was touching on some like very core Star Wars to me. Like there were some sequences in those two episodes where I was like, yeah, this is what Star Wars is supposed to be about. And this is what makes it fun. And, and I thought it, it looked pretty good. I I don't think it's, it doesn't have the gravity or the drama that Andor gripped you with every episode. There was something Certainly. there's something a little off and I can't quite feel there's something missing from this show that like is that, that it's not reaching the best of the Mandalorian. Like I said, it's not reaching Andor felt like every episode lives were in the was, balance. Was, you was didn't know what was going to happen next, right? And this show doesn't do that, but I am finding myself very entertained. I think it's more consistent than Obi-Wan was. Um, it's certainly more consistent than Book of Boba Fett was uh, at, at its sort of non-Mandalorian points. So I'm really liking the show. I'm a little bummed that it does seem like we're heading toward Thrawn as like a, almost a cut scene or like an end of season cliffhanger. I was really looking forward to seeing Lars Mikkelsen actually play the character. And it doesn't seem like we're going to see a lot of that. But other, overall, I would say like this is the kind of show where I would certainly be ready to saddle up for a sec second season. They've done enough already to keep me interested, yes. but they haven't peaked to where I'm ready to call this a classic yet. Yeah, I would agree with you 100% on, on, on all those points, Brian, regarding the show. Uh, I think it's beautiful to watch. That last episode was beautiful to watch. Uh, again, I've said it. I said it with Andor, and I and I would say say it with Ashoka as well that these are sort of uh, shows that I would love to see in a theater, right, in a big screen because of how beautiful, I, especially Ashoka, uh, the the episode four was. My problem too was the scene. I think it was episode three where Sabine is training with. What's the droid's name? Wang yeah. Ho, Wo, yeah. Wo, Wo Wang, something like that. <laughs> so he's training with her, and Osh Ashoka shows up, and then Ashoka pulls out the helmet. Brian, you remember that? Yeah. She pulls out the helmet, the helmet, the, the shielded helmet, which she can't see. They, for me, Brian, had the odd. Uh, Audacity to repeat the same lines Luke said with regards to the helmet. Here's my problem. The first time, correct me if I'm wrong, his ability for the force was first, uh, I guess, shown to him by Obi-Wan, correct? He yeah, was, that was that, the first time of a training. That scene. It's in yes. that scene with the helmet where he says, I could feel something. I could almost feel the remote. He says yes, that. exactly. Was she, Sabine, not her Padawan at some point? Yeah, she was. Okay. Another thing. What do we see in Clone Wars, um, the, the, pre, the, the, the prequels uh, uh, of Star Wars? We see little younglings practicing with the helmet on i cannot believe that she's never seen or trained without that helmet before brian i did not buy that hmm. if you're gonna go that route do it a different way don't make it seem like this is the first time she's had to like this was a surprise there should have been a different reaction not 
Like, how am I repeating the same lines, Brian? Yeah, it's fan service. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, man. Stop that. Stop that. My second problem with the Ahsoka series is that Balin Skull will not be in season two. Yeah, I, that's well. That's not that's not the show's fault, though. Yeah, that's not the show's fault. No, no. All right, that's, that's me. That's yeah. We'll talk. About, yes. I want to talk about him, but yes, that's a it's okay, a fair okay. it's a fair critique in that sense. Yeah, because man, we'll talk about him. But those are my two issues. But so far, Brian, the Shoga series uh, is living up to everything what Star Wars I think is is meant to be uh, with regards to the Jedi. Um, and and the war and and you know what I appreciate, Brian, is the realistic aspect of this new regime uh, 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 controlling everything, right? The new republic, and it not going as smoothly is is there's not a happy ending. Return of the Jedi was not a happy ending. It was a happy ending because the war is over, so to speak. Yeah, you know, but they got problems. So yeah. Those are those are my, <laughs> those are my uh, thoughts on it. Well, it's funny because so if if the if the ill fated last trilogy didn't exist, right? So, i.e., you didn't actually know what was coming after this show, right? Effectively, you would still know that they were screwed because yeah. the government of the, the governance of these people is so bad. Like, yeah. right when she, like even when Hera is having that conversation on on the hologram with Mon Mothma and all the other politicians, you're just like, you know, you you gonna not only is it gonna go bad for you, you're gonna deserve it when it goes bad yeah. for you, which as we find out in Force Awakens in a scene I don't particularly care for, um, then Star Killer Base eradicates the entire New <laughs> Republic. I'm like. A lot of you people probably, you know, had that coming with your oversights and your arrogance and all the stuff we're seeing here. So you're, you're totally right. The new, the new republic is, you know, it's it, it almost like cheapens everything that like Luke Han and Leia were fighting for. It's like we were fighting for this, really. <laughs> and let me just put this out, and then we can move on. If I was Chewbacca, I would have thrown that medal across. <laughs> I would have hit somebody with it. Like, what is this? I would have just thrown in it, stomped it, and ripped it apart. Like, really, yo, really? Go ahead, Brian. Ashoka. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I, I think one thing that that is working for me in this show that took a little while to get going is actually Rosario Dawson herself. I had some okay. early concerns that she was kind of. They were they were kind of doing the same thing they did with Obi Wan, where and they've done with some of these other shows where the lead character only is, is kind of just passing the ball, and she was mm -hmm. kind of like standing there with her arms folded and her head tilted to one side, and she wasn't really kind of offering much, and there wasn't a lot of emotion. So I was very excited to see in episodes three and four, both in the space battle and then sort of in the lightsaber battle in particular. I was like, okay, like now we're starting to see that you have a distinctive character and something that. You know, fans of the animated shows already knew, but like we wanted to see more, honestly, of what we got a glimpse of in the Mandalorian debut, that episode in, in season yeah. two. So I think that's coincide. I don't think it's a coincidence that this show has turned up as what her character is providing to each episode has has turned up. So I think that's like one thing where I'm like most excited now to see kind of episodes five and six. It's like, you know, now that you know she's obviously in the world between worlds spoiler alert if you don't know canon that's where she is with that's where anakin is like that could lead to some interesting stuff so i think that's that's like the number one thing the number two thing is um like you said i thought the staging in particular in episode four of the way they did the lightsaber battles the backdrops they had the stakes they had how they matched up like it's it beautiful. was done really well like i know you're criticizing kind of the the non sequitur of the training. I actually thought the yeah. fighting made sense. It's like, okay, Sabine in the rematch with Shin is using her Mandalorian tech, you know, technical skills as well as her lightsaber because she's not force sensitive. And quite honestly, Shin shouldn't be that good of a fight. Like, she's the apprentice to Balin's skull. She should yeah. not be 
unbeatable. And so it kind of makes sense that she gets distracted and she kind of like gets discombobulated and thrown off her game in a way that if it was Skull versus Sabine, Sabine would be toast in you know, yeah, two yeah, seconds, yeah. right? And we actually kind of see that subtly at the end of the episode where he kind of just seduces her into the outcome he wants without even... Mm. He, he puts his sword away immediately. He's like, I got yeah, you. Yeah, I don't even need yeah, to have yeah, the lightsaber. Yeah. Right. So that, that shows you the difference between master and apprentice. And I'm like, ah, so this is Dave Filoni, show, you know, his understanding of Star Wars. Meanwhile, Ashoka versus Skull, you're seeing two masters of the craft, right, who approach it differently. And so I really enjoyed the duality of that. And I don't know. That to me was like something I've just kind of been waiting for. Like, it, I feel like the new trilogy, we never got like the epic duel that like made a lot of sense. And I mm -hmm. feel like even in Obi-Wan, the, the duel was compelling. The rematch, the final rematch is compelling to watch. But in some ways I felt like this was just better choreographed, like better, it looked better and was kind of better put together. So I enjoyed it more, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, let's get to Balin Skull, man. This dude's presence on screen is like, he comes straight out of a comic book, man. Straight out. Of, the wide shoulders. Imagine Brian for a moment, if if he was still around, him being uh, the Dark Knight Returns, him being Bruce Wayne, the Dark Knight oh, that's Returns. Interesting. That's interesting. Oh my God. He just exudes just presence when he's on screen especially in this the way he's the way they, they they made him look is just he looks majestic usually ray stevenson especially as he became more mainstream as an actor tended to get more rough and tumble parts right like he was he was frank castle in punisher war zone he was volstag in thor he um, even in like, he plays a small part in the, in the Clive Owen, Antoine Fuqua, King Arthur. And he's like, a, he's always this like rough and ready kind of tough guy. Yeah. I like that this character is not that. I like mm -hmm. that he, you know what he, it almost at points, the way he looks and carries himself. It's like, this is what Obi-Wan would be like if Obi-Wan kind of broke bad. Yeah, like he's yeah, got yeah, that yeah. same almost like sense of humor with like self-confidence. He's very calm. He's a step ahead. He's not totally bad. And that's the thing I love is that he, he kind of has this like real admiration for the Jedi and Ashoka. He is not. He said it with that one caricature line. Sith. And that's, I think that's still got some legs. Like we're going to see that go somewhere probably before this show is, is this season is done, but it made me just almost regret some of Ray Stevenson's career because I was like watching this and being like, this guy had more to give in different yeah. types of roles than Hollywood. I wonder, yeah, to do. yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know if there was just oversight on him possibly being a lead guy because he had, he, he just, he just overpowers the screen with his presence and, and when he speaks, he's just, he's just, he looks like the guy, the man. But um. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, where his plan is going or what he is counting on happening for himself and for who else. I don't know. Um, so his, his, his backstory is, 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 is quite interesting to me. Well, that's why I think the character is compelling because you know that he's not on the side of good, but you also know that he isn't actually totally aligned with Morgan Elsbeth. You know that. You can sense it. You can sense that he's after something else. Um, and whether it's what Ezra, it? whether it's yeah. Thrawn, whether it's something else amidst that that he's he's interested in, I feel like there's a twist coming with regard to his his character. So I'm, I I'm hope it I hope it's not lame. I hope it's not lame. Because <laughs> they they're building it up. They're building it up. I think the one if there is a silver lining, by the way, and, and obviously there's no silver linings to Ray Stevenson passing, I would suspect this was a character from its conception that was never intended to last past this season. So I don't think his dying in real life is going mm -hmm. to force an awkward rewrite yeah, 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 between yeah. seasons, if that makes sense. So I think we yeah, will yeah, see yeah. the completion of whatever he was meant to do. Yeah, because certainly we're going to get an Ashoka remax rematch with him uh and 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 so that should be interesting to see how she overpowers him but yeah let us know in the comment section below anything else brian before we wrap this one up um 
just I guess, you know, because we've got the two episodes left, and I made that comment of like it isn't quite at that Andor stakes level. Do you think no. it can get do you think it can get there? And like, does it need to get there for this show to have done its job? No, Brian, because Andor is a very unique story in that we don't have books to refer to, we don't have cartoons, none of that. This is a unique story on how the rebellion was formed. And so there is a lot at stake in each episode as we get closer and closer to them. Obviously, Rogue One, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's another show that can, in the Star Wars world, that can each time, each, each time out is better and better and better. It's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, what they pulled fair. off was an, is an amazing feat. And I didn't go into Ashoka expecting to see Andor quality type writing uh, of, of, of that feat. So I went in there just looking for a Star Wars show. And this is, is that. Yeah, that's what I like about it is that they're not they're not really beating around the bush too much. Like they're giving you the lightsabers. They're giving you know even episode three. Like fine, you want if you want to quibble with Ashoka walking out on the spaceship and do it like, but that's kind of Star Warsy type stuff. It's like she, you know it's a little stretching it for her to be using the force <laughs> of space in the helmet like that. But but it was a good space battle, and that's kind of that, that's kind of what Star Wars is about. Is Sabine working for you? Like that's the one I can't. I'm like there's moments where I think the character and the actress are doing are doing a really nice job, and there's other points where I'm like. This character's flip flopping and sort of, you know, the, I get it. She's morally not on it, but like it's almost like annoying sometimes <laughs> as well. So I've, I don't know. It's I feel like I me. can end this season liking her and I can end this season being kind of put off by her. I'm getting the Ant Man 3 Cassie Lang vibe. So. Right? There's a little bit of that. There's a little uh, bit of but that. The, but her first initial outing, I was like, okay. And then I, it's like, I think it, what the problem is, Brian, is that I'm not really too concerned with her emotional state. You know, I, I know that she wants to see Ezra Bridger. I don't know too much the history between her and Ashoka, I've, other than that she was a former apprentice and she couldn't, that she couldn't deal with it. But I don't really care, you know, too much about it. They haven't really made me. She hasn't done anything, you know. She just looks like she's a person that she can be that can be manipulated. Yeah, you know. L last thing for me, I think the show has made a good choice is that there are very few characters actually in this show. Like we spend good time with Ashoka, Sabine, Hera, uh, on, and the droid on the good side, Hu Yang. That was his name. And Hu Yang, Hu Yang. Yeah, and then it's really kind of you know Balin Skull. Shin is really more of a physical character. She's really sort of a character character. And then Morgan Elspeth, but then we know Thrawn is kind of waiting, you know, waiting in the wings, you know? And so yeah. I, and then Ezra is probably waiting on the other side. So it's like, okay, I look at that cast list and I'm like, I don't need any more than that. I, I don't need, yeah. you know, 40, 50 characters. Like, this is good. Like, let's spend time with these characters, get to know them and we can build a show with that. So um, good decision by Filoni, I think. So yeah, no, I, this is one of those where it's like, it's going fine. I think it could end really well. Maybe we're going to be complaining about how they landed or didn't land the plane, but I'm interested. This is a, this is yeah. a rebound for, you know, and a step up, I think, for, for Star Wars. So yeah uh i mentioned that that little that little part to uh to neil because he he's loving the show um with regards well, to he loves the being... lightsabers right he didn't like it because yeah, 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 there's no yeah, force yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did like it i i think i i re revisited that conversation he said he liked andor but it was, i guess that part of it was uh missing for him um but uh when I pointed that out about Sabine not knowing about the helmet and stuff like that, like that's uh, oversight, I think. That's oversight. That doesn't make sense to me. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Shoka series so far. It releases on Tuesdays at 9 p.m., Brian? Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it out on the West Coast here at 6. But yeah, Tuesdays, Tuesdays at 9 p.m. And only, only a few more episodes, right? So for this season. Yeah, two, right? Yeah, only two more, I think. Because this six episode, Brian, I'm telling you, man, it's killing me. It's killing me. It's killing me. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes